the Joe Rogan experience. Reality television is a very strange animal yeah. because it's not reality, you know, a lot of the times at least. And one of the things I think that's really exciting about those shows like Life Below Zero and your situation in particular was that there's only so much of that you can fake. I mean, just the the actual undisputable reality of your existence is so fascinating you have this tiny little fucking house that you built yourself on a lake and then wolves are trying to kill you like that <laughs> shit is real you know what i mean yeah. i mean and you're, you're out there walking in the snow all you have is like a rifle and some snowshoes and a backpack that's as real as is humanly possible and anything that they bullshit with there it's like so what because the 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 scene itself it's so crazy. Like, just yeah, your it, your life. I always feel like, th yeah, there's no need to bullshit. Yeah. Why do people think they need to bullshit? And it's not just reality TV, but in general. I mean, come on. It's in politics. It's in everything. Yeah. Just being straightforward and honest can get you a long ways. But a lot of people think, for some reason, that it's better to bullshit. And why do you think that is? Because in the short term, it can work. For some people, it even seems to work for quite a while. I mean, come on. You're talking you can, about the president? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> you can go a long ways on bullshit. But I don't know. I mean, to me, how do you feel inside about yourself if you're making some false story up about yeah. yourself? Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's something about it, too, that when someone gets caught, like that uh, Jussie Smollett guy, when he got... Am I saying it wrong? He said it like Dave did. I did, I did say it like Dave did. No, he said Juicy Smollett. Yeah, yeah, is it just Jesse Smollett? Jesse Smollett, yeah. Smollett. Think, yeah. Do you know who he is? No. Good for you. I should not even tell you. You don't need to know this nonsense. No, I'm trying to get up to date. It's a guy who was an actor on the show Empire. He was actually in one of the Alien movies, too. He was in... Um, which one was he in? He was in the one with... Uh, it was a good one. He was in a good one. He was one of the, the people on the ship. Anyway, um, he was in one of the more recent Alien movies. What? He's in the Mighty Ducks, too, apparently. Well, there you go. I didn't know that. He's been in a bunch of shit. Anyway, he's an actor, and uh, he made up a story, allegedly, seems like he made it up, of uh, getting beat up by these uh, white supremacists with uh, mm. Trump hats on, MAGA hats on. They put a noose around his neck, and... He walked into the hotel with the noose still around his neck and, and told the whole story. Like, he didn't even bother taking the noose off of his neck, which is like, everybody's like, what? Wait, what? Like, everybody that heard the story. It's such a badly concocted story. Everybody that heard the story was like, what the fuck? And then the two guys that he uh, got to rough him up, he got these two guys to rough him up, and then they came out and said, no, this is bullshit. This guy paid us. And then... The Chicago uh, Police Department is, uh, they're prosecuting him. They're trying to get him to pay for their investigation. There's mm. lawsuits, and he's still, it's, it's, it's the most obviously fake story ever. And it's coming out of a guy who is a really successful actor. So it's so crazy. It's this, you know, r r race, racial hate. This hate crime story that this guy concocted for attention. Apparently, you know, the, the thought is that he wasn't happy with his role on Empire or what, but it was a huge national story wherever, because everybody knew kind of right away that it was fake. Everybody was like, wait, what? Yeah. He's got the noose around his neck and he was holding a Subway sandwich. He went to a Subway. So he still had the sandwich, right? Somebody smacked him in the head a couple of times, and he had a noose around his neck. He's telling this crazy story, and he wants to hold press conferences. He said he was the black Tupac, or the gay Tupac, he called himself. Sorry. It was just complete nonsense. And there's something about him talking, telling his story, where you know it's bullshit. And you're like, what are you doing? Like, what is this? It's such, it's so compelling. When you see someone lie like that about some crazy, wacky, made-up story, it's so compelling. It's like, because you know, like, I, when I was a little kid, I would lie about shit. I'd make stuff up, mm. you know? I mean, every little kid will tell you a lie. And I, I remember thinking, this guy never stopped. Like, he, he, like, lied, like, when he was a little kid. Yeah. And he just kept lying. That happens to some people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They, that's the dangerous thing about lying. Oh, yeah. If you lie enough, I think some people actually start believing it. Oh, for sure. 
yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's it's, a psychosis involved, for yeah. sure. Yeah, some people, when they lie about their past, and they, you know, like, the one of the weirder ones is, like, when guys get caught with stolen valor. Like, they have a crazy lie, made-up story about their military history and war record. and That yeah. happened with somebody in reality TV that was working with uh, Cody Lundin. Wasn't there somebody working with him? Dual survivor or something that they had. Oh, one of his one of his guys was was a stolen valor guy. Mm. May, I shouldn't say. It. I, I don't know. I never watched the show, but I, if I remember right, I heard that. He's a weird one, huh? That guy just walking around barefoot with his disgusting feet. I like to go barefoot. <laughs> yeah, but his feet they looked like the monster's feet. <laughs> he would show them like it'd be like a thing, like a badge of courage. He would show these gigantic calloused feet. Like yeah. what? Because he didn't have any shoes. Because yeah. he, everywhere he walked, he walked barefoot. So his, the bottom of his feet was like the top of this table. Hmm. Like this hard, crusty hmm. fucking... Look at that. Look at that guy's shoe. His foot. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, but here's funny. the thing, man. Mine don't get like that, even when I go. Because yeah, he's out there <laughs> in the fucking desert constantly. Is that That's not his foot, dude. That's yeah, a little kid's foot. So. Really? It says Cody's flip-flops. Oh, it was like a flip-flop oh, that yeah. he made? Maybe. He made it for someone, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's something about walking around barefoot that seems really fucking gross. <laughs> oh, I love it. In the summer, it's the first thing I want to do is get my shoes off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I climb up it's, uh, the mountains barefoot until I get to where the rocks are, you know? Any, really? Oh, yeah. I've walked like the 60 miles from the road to my camp, two-thirds of the way barefoot. Really? Yeah, yeah. got a blister on my foot after about 20 miles and so took my shoe off, and I realized, hey, the foot without a shoe feels a lot better than one with a shoe, so I took them both off, went really? the rest of the way. Oh, yeah. I'm big into walking barefoot. <laughs>